in this lecture we will be discussing some of the questions and their solution related to your chapter number 8 uh the, these are just a uh, few of the uh, questions from your um, uh, exercise and your problems uh, so it will help you to easily solve questions from your book some of the question i have taken from your book and some of the question from the other book uh, but you, the question you are uh, you will see in the book are just like these question uh, so it would help you to exercise certain uh, different question and help it have will helps in your understanding this is the first question uh, i have also given this type of question in your assignment so please read it uh, very carefully uh, and it is related to cost flow assumption on may 10 hudson computing sold 90 millennium laptop computers to apex publishers at the date of this sale hudson perpetual inventory records included the following cost layers for millennium laptops uh so there were two purchases first one was april 9th and on that date they have they had purchased 70 uh, units uh, at a at a 50, at a cost of 15 per unit uh, and on may uh, first they have purchased 30 unit at 1600 per unit cost the total cost is 153000 and the total quantity of uh, uh, this uh, this computers laptop laptop computers are 100 you have to prepare journal entries to record the cost of 90 millennium laptop so, uh, laptop sold on may 10th assuming that hudson computing uses the uh, specific identification method and according to this 62 of the units sold were purchased on april 9th and the remaining units were purchased on may 1st Uh, the total 90 uh, uh, laptop were sold from which 62 were from the uh, uh, from the purchase of april 9th and the remaining were from the purchase of may 1st uh, or and secondly if the company is using average cost method thirdly if the company is using fifo method or company using lifo method and the uh, e part is discuss briefly the financial reporting differences that may arise from choosing the fifo method over the lifo method this is the solution of exercise 8.2 in this we have to find out uh, that how much amount we have to transfer to cost of goods sold over here uh, we have uh, uh, find out the total cost depending upon specific identification method uh, over here uh, we have taken 60 62 units from the april 9th purchase and 28 units from the next purchase because they have identified that the total 90 units sold are, uh, are the combination of them are that 62 units were taken from the uh, the earlier sale and 28 went from the later sale that is may 1st so uh, we have multiplied 62 uh, with the uh, 1500 that was the previous cost 93000 is the total value and 28 units from the later purchase that is 63 uh, 1600 per unit cost now we, the total cost adding up we'll get the total cost of 1 lakh 36 37800 now the second uh, part cost of, uh, the same um, general entry would be passed in every uh, transaction in every case but uh, just there would be a change of the amount of cost of goods sold uh, now Uh, over here uh, then the second uh, part that is b part the cost of goods sold uh, value uh, is uh, 137700 uh, now what how we have determined this we know that there are total uh, 100 units in the in the uh, in the inventory and their total cost was 153000 we divide 153000 uh, from one uh, 100 units and we'll get 90 per unit uh, the 1 lakh sorry 1 lakh we lakh uh, we uh, get 1 1530 uh, per unit cost average cost multiplying it with 90 because 90 is the total uh, unit which were sold now the total cost of uh, this uh, cost of goods sold by taking the cost flow assumption of average cost per method is 137700 the c part uh, says that we have to uh, take the assumption of uh, fifo fifo assumption is that we have to sold those unit first which we have purchased first now the, the 70 units were taken from uh, the previous units per uh, previous uh, purchase and 20 units from the latest purchase so and ending up them both of them will get 1 lakh 37000 
the last is uh, lifo method that says that we have to take the latest cost the the uh, the, uh, the purchase the latest purchase now the latest purchase is uh, 60 units so first uh, 30 units sorry the latest purchase is 30 units so we have multiplied it with 1600 and this the 1600 is the latest cost and uh, 60 units from the uh, previous um, purchase multiplying it with their their um, consecutive their whatever their cost is now the total cost is uh, 138000 so move the uh, LIFO will give you majority of time. LIFO will give you the highest cost of good sold. The last section or E part of the question is that uh, what are the financial reported differences while using FIFO method of costing or LIFO method of costing? As we know that when we use FIFO method, we will assign the oldest cost to cost of goods sold and a higher cost to uh, the inventory. So uh, under the FIFO, the cost of goods sold is based on the oldest cost. Uh, thus, relatively to use uh, LIFO. as when we use lifo method we assign the latest cost to cost of goods sold so as compared to lifo method when we use fifo method uh, the cost of goods sold is lower and uh, the the fifo method will result in a higher net income because uh, we will get net income after deducting the cost and other expenses but if the cost of goods sold value is um, uh, lower so obviously it will give higher net income so the fifo method will result in higher net income during the period of rising prices which will increase company's uh, net income uh, sorry uh, income tax liability as it increase the net income uh, and when you have uh, when net income is increase you have to pay higher taxes and in case of balance sheet fifo method reports inventory at most current cost that means your uh, inventory cost is higher when you are using fifo method and your cost of goods sold is lower when you are you are using fifo method and the lifo method as compared to that when you are using lifo method your inventory cost is lower uh, and there is lower value in the inventory cost and the higher values in uh, your cost of goods sold so these are the two different methods uh, when you are using different kinds of methods so you they are these are the financial reporting differences Uh, lifo method help you to uh, um, in in case of your income tax liability because when you are you are using lifo method uh, your cost of goods sold increases which will increase your uh, decrease sorry which will uh, decrease your uh, net income and obviously the net uh, your uh, income tax liability is also at lower edges thank you now starting the second question which is about uh, appropriate method of inventory the company should follow uh, this question uh, ask you that in what cases you should go for average cost method fifo method or lifo method um, now starting the question the warm up shop sells heating oil coal and kerosene fuel to residential customer heating oil is kept in large storage tanks that supply the company's fleet of delivery trucks uh, coal is kept in huge bins that are loaded and emptied from the top by giant scooping machines uh, kerosene is sold off the shelf in 5 gallon containers at the company's retail outlet separate inventory records are maintained for each fueling fuel type Uh, which of the cost uh, flow assumption average cost fifo or lifo best describes the physical uh, flow of the heating oil inventory explain the coal inventory explain the kerosene inventory explain which of these cost flow assumption is likely to result in lowest income tax liability for the company and explain so now uh, as the three fuel types are different so obviously we can use different methods for different cost flow method for different uh, kind of uh, fuel and uh, as we have discussed in the previous question that whenever you are using a lifo or fifo method you you are, it show you should understand that a lifo method uh, will give you a great tax advantage as compared to fifo method so next in the next slide we will discuss the solution is this of this question first of all uh, starting with the solution of this question as heating oil is purchased uh, and put into storage tanks 
it mixes completely with the heating oil remaining in these tanks from the prior purchases prior purchases means that the previous purchases the uh, the remaining uh, the main the meaning or the remaining oil from the previous inventories or previous purchases so as oil is, uh, oil is pumped into the company's delivery truck it actually represent a blend of multiple cost purchases so you cannot separate different uh, different uh, types uh, of purchases thus the average cost method would be appropriate uh, in this kind of uh, material second is the company's large cold storage bins are loaded and emptied from top by giant machines so you are using giant machines uh, making the most recent coal acquired the recent um, coal sold thus the life form method best describe the physical flow of the coal inventory as you are as coal are are, uh, are kept in storage bin and you are using scooping machines and these giant scooping machine can take coal from the uh, upper levels therefore the life form method would be uh, better for this kind of uh, material the third one is the kerosene inventory is stored on shelves in 5 gallon containers management properly probably rotates this stock on a regular basis thus the fifo method best describe the physical flow of the uh, kerosene inventory because you have you you kept kerosene or uh, inventory on in, in five gallons containers and you can uh, easily identify that which uh, which uh, consignment is come from which date and uh, how you can uh, differentiate them with them and uh, you can easily use uh, FIFO method and you can assign the uh, the first uh, uh, the previous cost to different uh, consignments and the different batches so FIFO method could be used. Second thing is the B part is the the answer of the B part is that the life form method would probably result in lower income tax liability as we as we have discussed in the previous uh, question that a life form method uh, put a latest cost into the cost of goods sold which will increase the cost of goods sold and decrease the gross profit uh, gross profit which will further decrease the net income therefore you have to pay taxes on your uh, taxes uh, taxes so uh, when your taxes your net income is is low. obviously you have to pay lower taxes so it will give you tax advantage and um, and mostly in the case of higher uh, when the in the in the in the economic environment of inflation so it will be uh, well consequently lower income tax than other allocation methods obviously life form method will give you lower tax liability in order for company to account for its entire inventory as a single combined pool all items should be relatively homogeneous obviously the physical properties of heating oil uh, coal and kerosene different different significantly uh, keeping separate inventory records for each fuel type makes the reporting figure more meaningful and give uh, management more control of the operations of the business if management determines for example that one of its product line is unprofitable it might decide to discontinue selling that product and focus attention on the profitable product now moving on to the next question uh, which says that jensen tire had two large shipment in transit at december 31st or uh, one was uh, 125000 inbound shipment of merchandise that means that these merchandise are coming from your suppliers and uh, shipped uh, and on the, the terms are fob that means uh, freight on board uh, december 28 fob shipping point which arrive at jensen's receiving dock dock on uh, january 2nd the other shipment was dollar 95 out outbound logistic or outbound shipment of merchandise to a uh, customer which was shipped and built by jensen on december 30 uh terms also this the same terms are apply over here that is freight on board uh, shipping point and reached this customer on the january 3rd in taking a physical inventory on december 31st jensen counted all goods on hand and priced the inventory on the basis of average cost the total amount was dollar 6 lakh uh, no goods in transit were included in this figure what amount should appear as inventory on the company's balance sheet at december 31st explain if you indicate an amount of other than 6 lakh state which asset or liability other than inventory also would be charged in amount so you have to uh, if you remember we have discussed the total amount of purchases and what things should be include when while we are determining the value of purchases as now we, in the next slide we'll discuss the uh, the uh, solution to this question now moving on to the solution 
Now the inventory, what amount of inventory which should report on December 31st? Uh, we will report 7,25,000 and the 7,75,000 includes the actual value of merchandise that was 6 lakh but we have also included the uh, freight charges of 1,25,000 uh, this is inbound uh, shipment uh, uh, merchandise and these uh, and because the terms of shipment was the, sh the terms were FOB that is freight on board therefore when your shipment is on the uh, board the transfer of title will be uh, um, transferred to the buyer. Therefore, we will include 1,25,000 uh, in the value of uh, merchandise. But the other 95,000 was out of bound, uh, outbound uh, shipment was uh, correctly uh, handled because the title to do these goods are, are now passed to a customer because the same FOB terms and conditions were applied over here. So when the goods were shipped, so they are not part of Jensen inventory at December 31st. This shipment was billed on December 30, so the account receivable is properly included in the balance sheet because you have to collect amount from your customer. Therefore, this the value is transferred to the uh, account receivable section. In addition to 1,25,000 increase inventory, uh, account payable should be increased by 1,25,000 because we have to pay this amount to our uh, supplier. Jensen owes the merchandise at December 31st and has a liability to pay for it. This question is about inventory write down. Inventory write down uh, it means that what will you may, uh, do in your accounting records or what treatment would you do with the inventory when their replacement cost has decreased. This means that you have purchased those inventory in higher prices in the previous period and now in the market the prices of those inventory has had decreased. So what type of treatment you will do? Now moving on to the question, late in the year software city began carrying word crafter, a new word processing uh, software program. At December 31st, software city's perpetual inventory records included the following cost layer in its inventory of word crafter programs. The purchased, uh, the first purchase was done on November 14 and they purchased 18 uh, of this uh, software programs at a cost of $400, $400 uh, per unit uh, and the total cost was $3,200. Uh, the second purchase was done on December 31st and they purchased 20 uh, quantity uh, at the price of 310. If you see the, per, uh, the, uh, the uh, per unit cost has decreased from 400 to 310 and the total cost was 6200. Now uh, the total available for sale are uh, 28 uh, uh, units and their total price is 4, 000, uh, 9400. You, the requirement is that at Dece December 31st, Software City takes a physical inventory and finds that all 28 units of Word Crafter are on hand. However, the current replacement cost, that is wholesale price of this product, is only $1.250 per unit. Prepare the in uh, entries to record uh, this write down of the inventory to the lower of cost or market at December 31. Uh, company policy is to charge LCM adjustment of less than 2000 to cost of goods sold and larger amount is to separate loss account. This, the second requirement of this question is that the cash sale of 15 word crafter program on January 9 at a retail price of $350 each assume that software city uses the FIFO flow assumption. The B portion of this question asks you now assume that current replacement cost of uh, word crafter uh, program is uh, $1.405 each. A physical inventory finds only 25 of these program on hand at December 31st. Uh, for this part, return in the original information and ignore what you have done in uh, part A. So uh, number one is prepare journal entry to record the shrinkage loss assuming that software city uses the uh, FIFO flow assumption. Second, prepare the journal entry to record the shrinkage loss assuming that software city uses the LIFO flow assumption. Which cost flow assumption, FIFO or LIFO result in the lowest net income for the period would using this assumption really mean that the company's operations are less efficient explained. Now moving on to uh, the solution of this question. Now moving on to the solution of this question. The first requirement is to uh, find out uh, the write down of inventory and uh, to lower of cost of market at December 31st uh, as we have ascertained that uh, the total uh, 
inventory cost is uh, current to cost is 9400 from two ta- two purchases the first purchase was done on november 14th uh, at a cost of 400 per unit and the second one is uh, 20 units which the cost of per unit was uh, 310 uh, that, and uh, the total cost now is 9400 but uh, as the uh, analysis of the markets uh, shows that now the current replacement cost or the not prevailing uh, uh, per unit cost of these item is 250 not more than that therefore we have to uh, certain this uh, um, this loss according to lcm principle but the company policy is that they transfer the loss of less than 20000 to 2000 less than 2000 to cost of goods sold and more than 2000 to loss from write down of inventory so is in this case uh, we see that the total loss is uh, 2400 which we have deducted uh, we have concluded from uh, dedu- deducting the value of uh, 7000 from 9400 7000 value is determined by multiplying the total 28 units with uh 250 cost per unit uh, now the the total loss is 2400 and we have uh, done the journal entry and the journal entry is that a loss from write down of inventory uh, is debited and the inventory is credited to uh, uh, to write down the inventory of 28 units of workcraft to the lower of cost of market the second uh, portion or second part of this uh, a section is that we have to determine the cash sale of 15 uh, you uh, know this uh, softwares uh, to um, software city um, if they are using fifo method now the fifo method is that we have to uh, determine the cost based on the previous purchases but uh, first we have to determine or we have to uh, pass the uh, entry for the sales and the per unit sale price was 350 so they receive cash of uh, 5250 by because they have sold uh, 15 units so 15 multiplied by uh, 350 that was the sale price now the so total sale is 35250 this is the entry of uh, a sales but we have to determine uh, the west value of cost of goods as sold as well in this case we have determined that in the previous uh, entry we have uh, write down the cost of inventory to 250 per unit and the, there is uniform cost to all the units therefore if we are using 5 or life or average cost method uh, whatever the case is in this case the the cost would be 250 dollar per units of each unit and so uh, we have uh, uh, sold uh, 15 units of wordcraft programs therefore we will multiply 15 with 250 now the total uh, cost of goods sold is 3750 Uh, uh, cost of goods sold was debited with uh, 3750 and inventory is credited with 3750 the b portion of this question ask us to uh, assume that the replacement cost of wordcraft program is 405 dollar a physical inventory finds that only 25 of few units on hand at december 31st for this point return to the original information and ignore what you have did in the part a but the, uh, this means that in uh, we have done with part a now we have to take the different assumption in the second part now first thing is the first we have to prepare the journal entry to re- record the shrinkage loss assuming that software city uses the five of the assumption uh, you know, um, what is the shrinkage loss shrinkage loss is loss is actually the loss which in which uh, we have certain damaged units or have we have lost certain units and there is uh, because whenever you are in a in a kind of environment if you are a journal store of if you are a company it might be possible that uh, certain kind of inventory item have misplaced or broken down or being theft uh, being stolen by any of the employee therefore uh, we have to record these shrinkage losses as well over here now uh, there uh, if you remember the previous data we have uh, we should have 28 units but the record says, says that we have only 25 f- uh, unit left in our inventory um, inventory So, so we first of all what we have to do is we have to re- record the this loss now moving back that this they have uh, t- told us that the company uses uh, the Uh, the the policy of the company is that they have to they have to pass this shrinkage or loss to uh, cost of goods sold if it's less than uh, 2000 therefore we have uh, move forward this loss to cost of goods sold so um, the 400 400 
um, we have multiply uh, 3 with 3 with 406 so the 400 that is actually 1200 now to the cost shrinked loss of three units of word craft software uses the FIFO assumption so 300 three units multiply by 400 so we'll get 1200 a total uh, shrinkage loss second thing is that cost of goods sold and inventory now uh, as we have determined that we have used in the previous question uh, uh, the, the three units were from uh, the sale of the the december 12th because the company is using a, a fifo method therefore we have um, record this uh, this cost this linkage loss to this second is uh, uh, assumption is the prepare the journal entry to record the shrinkage loss assuming the software uses the LIFO assumption. The same cases over here, but in this case, we are using LIFO method. The LIFO method, uh, actually, uh, you, uh, in case of LIFO method, we have uh, a higher cost in cost of goods sold, but lower cost in the inventory. Therefore, in this case, we will multiply this unit with the, the oldest unit, that is 3 unit at the cost of 310. So in case of LIFO method, we have uh, less loss as compared to uh, the uh, value we are using FIFO method. Third, uh, they are asking us that uh, which cost flow assumption LIFO or FIFO result in the lowest net income for the period. Would using this assumption really mean that the company's operations are less efficient? Explain. So uh, now using the FIFO method uh, would result in uh, to, uh, 270 lower net income uh, figures than using the LIFO method that is 1200 minus 930 that would give us a, a 270 difference this is due to the reduction in price paid for the second purchase although the company would report a lower net income figures using FIFO it would not really be any less any less efficient in conducting operation and inventory valuation method affect only the allocation of the cost between ending inventory and the cost of goods sold there there would be difference in this it has no effect upon the total cost actually incurred in purchasing or manufacturing inventory 